Welcome to Duality and the Sexes, Part 10 of this 12-part Wisdom Series. These teaching programs are made possible by your own world books, publishers of the Colbrin Bible and God's Child Covenant by Marshall Masters. Please feel free to share complete and unedited copies of these programs with others. For more information, visit virtualserenity.com. Duality in a future survival sense is a straightforward concept. However, our present day worldview often defines it in subjective terms, such as believer and non believer. Consequently, the more we use judgment to subjectively distinguish these dualities, the more indistinguishable they become, even for theologians, philosophers, and other moralists. Granted, we can tolerate this subjective brain candy in a comfortable world, but not when we're trying to survive a global cataclysm. This is because clouding our perceptions of duality with subjective judgment is self-defeating and dangerous. Imagine that you're standing before a mirror. If you judge yourself to be a good person, this is the reflection you'll expect to see in the mirror. If you are a bad person, you'll see the same reflection, unless you've honestly judged yourself first. Either way, how can you subjectively know for certain that the reflection in the mirror is you as opposed to someone else? As you listen to the Elohim explain duality, search inward to know if you are ready to free yourself of judgment as the answer will have a direct bearing on your ability to navigate the troubled years ahead with greater safety. Welcome. Today we will speak to you of duality. It has been a term that has caused quite a struggle for humanity. For when one talks of the Creator, they do not talk about the Creator as a dual entity, but rather as a singular entity. Yet we live in a world by its very construct is dual in nature, male, female, night, day, good, bad. These are all examples of the term duality. So how does a human being continue its growth with the duality in its very nature? It comes from the singular source known as the Creator. When we look at duality, we would tell you that it is simply the balance and it is the nature of the construction of this planet. But it too is an illusion. It is part of the process, if you will, of the soul or spirit to recognize that there is no such thing as good or bad, right, or wrong, male or female, but we simply coexist with those aspects of the duality. It is the dynamics 
of the process of going through this duality construction that may assist those in the years to come for understanding that it's an illusion will help you to see beyond the events taking place as either good or bad or that one side is good and the other is evil or that one choice is bad or another is good or up until this point we have given you many things along the way to assist you in the process to compensate shall we say for the duality of your existence when we conclude our series we shall pull all of these things into one place for you to make sense out of this process that you are all going through in the days the weeks months and years ahead 2012 is fast approaching and the events are cataclysmic they're incomprehensible and they are misunderstood so by working with these lessons will give you yet a better a deeper more profound understanding of your individual purpose as well as humanity's purpose in the weeks months and years ahead we thank you In 2012 and beyond, the most critical duality for our species will be that of man and woman. And this duality gives rise to a troubling question. How can we, as a species, survive a global cataclysm and still recognize ourselves? Answering this question was my quest when I set out to write God's Child Covenant Return of Nibiru an action love story set against a backdrop of human tribulation on such a grand scale as to be nearly unimaginable. It is here the story of my epiphany begins, one that started before the first page was written and then haunted me from one chapter to the next. I've long believed men and women to be co-creators and co-equals. Only in our joining can we make possible the greatest design for our species. Yet we often abuse this sacred duality with callous disregard for the greater good, much the same way we fail ourselves as the stewards of our fragile planet. And so I wondered if the coming tribulation would push us down a rocky slope of subjugation and disrespect, and in doing so, fail us to a darker world? Or could we endure as co-creators and co-equals and live on to build a beautiful new world? As I authored my novel, these two possibilities often visited my thoughts like a gentle touch on the shoulder. Committed to resolving this riddle, I explored the duality of our sexes through the relationships between the heroes and heroines in my novel. Through them, I sought clarity, and it did come to me, but not until the manuscript was finally ready for the printer. It was then I experienced my epiphany, one so simple yet profound. In that glorious instant, the hundreds of pages I'd written became a minuscule price for admission into the theater of human destiny and evolution. As I beheld this epiphany for the first time, 
I wondered if I had accidentally stumbled upon it many pages ago, without even recognizing it. It would be a passing thought of no consequence. For finally, here it was, radiating the warmth of insight like a morning sun rising majestically above a dark and distant horizon. Yes, this was my glorious epiphany. Humankind will survive and evolve as an enlightened species for as long as men and women can love and cherish each other for their differences. It is this duality of differences that strengthens us all, because it is a duality conceived by our Creator to match two perfectly different parts. The dark days facing us shall be difficult, but in this crucible of evolution we will awaken in great numbers to this epiphany and our species will flourish. Nurtured by this enlightened duality, distant generations will come to dwell amongst the stars in vast numbers, and they will proudly say, we came out of Earth, and our Earth mothers and Earth fathers loved us. In the next teaching of this series, the Elohim explain our right to choose as a responsibility and as a gift. These teaching programs are made possible by your own world books, publishers of the Colbrin Bible and God's Child Covenant by Marshall Masters. The Colbrin Bible is a two-part wisdom text this secular anthology offers the wisdom of hundreds of ancient authors and the many harbinger signs of their prophecies are now converging on 2012. God's Child Covenant is a romantic action drama set against a global tribulation. It offers a realistic yet hopeful vision for the future because 2012 will be less about what is in your bunker and more about what is in your heart. A printed transcript of this entire teaching series is available. For more information, visit virtualserenity.com.